A uh, very good afternoon to all of you. My name is Devin Gangwar, and today I'm going to discuss some of the most important current affairs of the October month. And this will really help you in getting a score uh, well in your examinations. So kindly share the session and make me sure that I'm audible to all of you. Is I'm audible to all of you? Make me sure. Is I'm audible to all of you? Hmm. So <clears throat> I welcome you all once again in the very special session of the current affairs and today we are going to discuss some of the most important current affairs of the October month and I hope these questions will be asked in your upcoming examinations and this will help you in gaining knowledge for your upcoming examinations. Okay. So the first question. Okay. Okay. Vikramaditya Dhali. Uh, Vikramaditya Dhali. Very welcome to uh, you. So here comes the first question for you. Sri Lankan writer Sihan Karuna Tilaka. Okay, very important question that will be asked in your upcoming examinations. I am damn sure that this question will be asked in the upcoming examinations. Okay, so Sihan Karuna Tilaka uh, has won the Booker Prize for the year 2022 for which of his novels. Okay, very important question for you. The trees on William Trickle Walker and the Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. So kindly give me the correct answer for this question. What is the correct answer for this question? Hmm. So for which novel Sihan Karuna Tilaka has won the Booker Prize 2022? Hmm. Kindly give me the correct answer for this question. What will be the correct answer? Vikramaditya. Oh, uh, option number A. Not at all. It is absolutely wrong. Vikramaditya, uh, the correct answer for this question is the seven moons of Mali Almeida. Okay, the seven moons of Mali Almeida is the correct option here in this question. Okay, the seven moons of Mali Almeida is the correct option for this question. So, <clears throat> let's discuss some information about the award. So, you have heard the Booker Prize, you have heard the Booker Prize, Booker Prize and some <clears throat> where you have also heard about International Booker Prize. So both these are same or are different. Okay. So both these are same or different. International International Booker Prize. So kindly tell me what is the difference between main difference between these. Okay, these all are the diff uh, same or different awards. So when we talk about the Booker Prize, when we talk about the International Booker Prize, it is given. It is given to any author. Okay, any author, any author of the country, any author of, yeah, we can say that author of any country. Okay author of any country okay but the next thing you should remember that <clears throat> the translation the translation should be available in english language okay translated in english language and published in published in UK, published in UK or Ireland, okay. So this is the award International Booker Prize, okay. And when we talk, talk about the Booker Prize, author of English novel only, okay, author of English novel only. So this is the award given <coughs> to any of the author who has written their work in English language only and published in UK and published in and published in UK. Okay. So, <coughs> hmm.
<coughs> okay so you have to remember that gitanjali shri gitanjali shri is the only author of gitanjali shri of india of india is only the winner of international booker prize okay so gitanjali shri is the only women or only indian who had won the international booker prize for novel for work tomb of sand okay what is the name of the novel tomb of sand or it was real it was written in hindi language at ret ki samadhi ret ki samadhi and it was translated by daisy rockwell okay it was translated by daisy rockwell okay it was translated by daisy rockwell and the award money that is pound 50000 50000 pound is equally distributed between the author and the between the author and the translator okay so you should remember that <coughs> and for <coughs> coming to the booker prize okay b s naipaul b s naipaul has won the first booker prize in 1971 okay 1971 in a free state for his novel in a free state okay what is the novel then in a free state very famous novel in a free state okay and the other one is salman rasdi other one is salman rasdi okay he won in the year 1981 for his novel midnight children for his novel midnight children okay and the next one is arundhati roy arundhati roy in 1997 in 1997 for his novel the god of small things the god of small things the god of small things so these are the three novel <coughs> sorry three writers who has won the uh, international sorry a uh, booker prize in a uh, booker prize and other names are other names are kiran desai and arvind adiga arvind adiga is the other person okay so he won in 2008 and she won in 2006 so what is the novel the white tiger the white tiger is the novel for which he won the booker prize okay and kiran desai's novel is <coughs> inheritance of loss inheritance of loss so you should remember these books because these books are really asked in the examinations and they are very much or you can say that they are frequently asked in the examinations okay now let's move to the next question from here Uh, in october 2022 madhya pradesh state has decided to develop a meghdoot forest at which of the following places okay so question is asking about the meghdoot forest question is asking about the meghdoot forest area which is going to be developed in madhya pradesh and you have to answer that in in which of the following places it is going to be developed here options are indore bhopal jabalpur and ujjain Here options are Indore, Bhopal, Jabalpur, and Ujjain. So here the correct answer for this question is Ujjain. Okay. Here the correct answer for this question is Ujjain. Ujjain is the correct answer for this question. So you have earlier heard that <coughs> the Prime Minister of India has inaugurated the Mahakal Lok Project. Okay. Mahakal Lok Project is recently inaugurated <coughs> at Ujjain and Ujjain. Okay. so the government of the uh, madhya pradesh has decided hmm so the government of the madhya pradesh has decided that the encroached area around the ujjain area or mahakal mandir mahakal mahakal temple will be uh, will be <coughs> taken back from the encroachers and the whole area will be developed as a meghdoot forest area around the mahakal lok project okay so you should remember that mahakal lok project is situated in ujjain okay 
and Meghdoot forest area will be developed at this place. Okay. And who is the CM of Madhya Pradesh? Who is the CM of Madhya Pradesh? Who is the CM of Madhya Pradesh? The answer will be Sri Sivraj Singh Chauhan. Okay. Sri Sivraj Singh. Sri Sivraj Singh Chauhan is the income met CM of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. And who is the governor? Who is the governor? Then Mangu Bhai, Mangu Bhai Patel, Mangu Bhai Chagan Bhai Patel is the governor of MP. Now let's move to the next question from here. HTT 40, HTT 40, an indigenous trainer aircraft designed and developed by HL. Okay, so you should remember that it is designed by which company? So it is designed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited was unveiled by which of the following during the 12th defense expo okay or here options are rajna singh amit amit shah narendra modi and om birla okay 12th defense expo 12th defense expo hmm kindly give me the correct answer for this question hmm rajna singh amit shah narendra modi and om birla Hmm. So, what will be the correct answer from for this question? Can you tell me the correct answer for this question? Okay, uh, Vikramadit Adhali is saying the op correct option is A. So, A is not the correct answer for uh, this question. Radna Singh has not unveiled the uh, aircraft trainer. The trainer, uh, the <coughs> aircraft has been. Uh, Unveiled by the Narendra Modi, that is the Prime Minister of India. So you should remember that it is an indigenous aircraft trainer, uh, indigenous trainer aircraft developed by the HAL and it was unveiled by the Narendra Modi. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Okay. Here comes the next question for you. MOU has been uh, signed between which of the following to increase the reach of financial solutions to last section of the society in India. Okay. The question is asking about the financial solutions. Okay. And this financial solutions is also known as financial inclusion. Okay, this is also known as financial inclusion. So, what do you understand by financial inclusion? So, financial inclusion here means that providing <coughs> providing banking services to the unbanked people at an affordable cost is known as financial inclusion. So, these two departments have <coughs> so these two, two organizations have signed an MOU to uh, to bring more people under the financial inclusion ambit, so what are the organizations? India Post Payment Bank and Reserve Bank of India. Option number two, State Bank of India <coughs> and Reserve Bank of India. Option number three, India Post Payment Bank and Reserve Bank of Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. And option number four, India Post Payment Bank and State Bank of India. So here the correct answer for this question is India Post Payment Bank and Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. Okay, India uh, India Post Payment Bank and Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. So this is the organization, this is the organization, uh, India Post Payment Bank, IPPB and Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. They signed an MOU to <coughs> increase the reach of financial solutions to large sections of the society. So let's discuss more about the <coughs> wholly owned subsidiaries of RBI. Wholly owned subsidiaries of RBI. Okay. Only owned subsidiaries of Reserve Bank of India. So the first thing which comes into the mind is Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation is the first organization or you can say the first wholly owned subsidiary of Reserve Bank of India and next comes here is Bharti Reserve Bank Bharti Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited Note Mudran Private Limited is the other company 
and <coughs> reserve bank <coughs> reserve bank innovation hub innovation hub is the other wholly owned subsidiary and the next one is reserve bank Okay, so these are the wholly owned subsidiaries of the Reserve Bank of India, and you should remember that DICG, this this BRB PNL is <coughs> is uh, responsible for printing currency in India, and the other one, Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation, that is this is also known as DICGC. This is also known as DICGC, and it is responsible for ensuring money of depositors, ensuring money of depositors in banks okay up to rupees 5 lakh per customer 5 lakh per customer okay now let's move to the next question recently the union home ministry has designated a total of 10 members of which of the following organizations as terrorist under the unlawful activities prevention act uapa okay so the <coughs> so here the uh, <coughs> terrorist organizations are really not important for your examinations but here one thing is very important that is unlawful activities prevention act that is uapa some <coughs> times the full form or the abbreviation is asked in the examinations and other times that is asked on which day sorry in which year the unlawful activities prevention act was passed okay so in which year unlawful activities prevention act was passed kindly tell me the answer so unlawful uh, the uh, uapa act okay the uapa was asked uh, for it passed in 1967 okay so here hezbul mujahideen laskar e taiba and harkatul mujahideen so all these three organizations 10 members were designated as uh, <coughs> terrorist all three ten all ten members of these organizations are declared as terrorist okay so these all are the terrorist organizations so here the correct answer for this question is option number four okay and you should remember what is the correct abbreviation for unlawful or uapa uapa stand for upa upa stand for unlawful activities prevention act and the act was passed in 1967 you should remember for your examinations because the uh, dates of the examine uh, dates of the acts was passed in the Hmm, examinations okay asked in the examinations who among the following was awarded the unhcr unhcr nansen refugee award 2022 very important question for your examinations very important question for your examination hmm can you tell me the correct answer for this question question number six question number six who has been who has been awarded unhcr nansen refugee award 2022 here options are narendra modi Barack Obama, Angela Merkel, and Nicolas Sarkozy. Who is the, what is the correct answer for this question? What is the correct answer for this question? Can you tell me the correct answer? Okay. Narendra Modi, Barack Obama, Angela Merkel, and Nicolas Sarkozy. So here the correct answer for this question is Angela Merkel. Okay. Angela Merkel is the <coughs> correct answer for this question. So she is the uh, former vice chancellor, former chancellor of Germany, former Chancellor of Germany. She is the former Chancellor of Germany and she has been given the UNHCR Nansen Refugee Award 2022 in October 2022 for, the, uh, for uh, her efforts in the <coughs> in the upliftment of refugees of the countries. Okay. Now let's move to the next question, question number seven. So the question number seven is asking at which of the following places is the fifth meeting of the international international uh, solar alliance proposed to be organized in october 2022 so kindly give me the correct answer for this question what is the place ahmedabad rome paris new delhi ahmedabad rome paris new delhi hmm. 
वॉट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन वॉट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन एट विच प्लेस द फिफ्थ आई एस ए मीटिंग वॉज कंडक्टेड so here the correct answer for this question is new delhi okay here the correct answer for this question is new delhi isa stands for international solar alliance so let's discuss some more important events or more important news about the isa okay so isa <coughs> the idea was conceived idea of isa idea of isa was announced at cop 21 cop 21 2015 at paris climate change agreement paris climate change paris climate change conference okay paris climate change con at the event of the paris climate change conference in 2015 the idea of the isa was announced by announced by pm narendra modi pm narendra modi and president of france president of france francis olan francis olan so these two were the persons behind the inter, behind the idea of the international solar alliance okay <clears throat> and some more important news so <clears throat> it focuses on the development of technology development of technology to harness solar energy to harness solar energy okay so this is the objective of the organization okay so <coughs> headquarter of this organization is in gurugram haryana the headquarters is located in gurugram in haryana and who is the director general director general of this organization is ajay mathur okay the director general of this organization is ajay mathur okay so <clears throat> a question was asked in the uh, rrb ntpc exams recently what does the unfcc means okay UNFCC means so it is the body which organizes which organizes the climate change conference every year so it is the body which organizes the cl organizes climate change conference every year and it stands for United Nations United Nations framework United Nations framework convention on climate change on climate change okay so this is the correct abbreviation that this is asked in the rrb ntpc exams okay so this is the abbreviation which is asked in your ex exam okay two times one time in up pet exam up pet exam recently and other in rrb ntpc exams okay so this is the body this is the body responsible for conducting the climate change conference every year so recently cop26 was conducted cop26 was conducted at glasgow scotland glass go scotland okay cop stands for 
COP stands for Conference of Parties. It's, it is also asked. Okay. Conference of Parties. Conference of Parties. And what does the number COP26 and COP21 signifies? So, the, real, uh, the number 26 is, signifies that it is the 26th session of the COP or Conference of Parties. Now, let us move to the next question. The, the 8th Parliamentary Speaker Summit P20 of G20 countries was held between 6th and 7th October 2022 at which of the following places. Okay. So, the question is asking what the Parliamentary Speaker's meeting of G20 countries was held at how was, was held at which of the following places? Here the options are given as Bali, Jakarta, Manila, Bangalore. Hmm. Kindly give me the correct answer for this question. Kindly give me the correct answer for this question. So here the correct answer for this question is the <coughs> meeting was held at Jakarta and in this meeting our Lok Sabha speaker, Lok Sabha speaker, Lok Sabha speaker, who is he? Lok Sabha speaker Om Birla participated. Okay, in this meeting, our Lok Sabha speaker Om Mirla participated. And who is the speaker of the Rajya Sabha? Okay, speaker of Rajya Sabha. Who is the speaker of Rajya Sabha? Kindly comment in the comment box. So, speaker of Rajya Sabha is the Vice President of India. Vice President of Vice President of India is the speaker of the Rajya Sabha. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> now, let's move to the next question from here. So, the next question is asking, according to the Ministry of Consumers Affairs, India is the world's largest producer and consumer of sugar. Okay. So, recently the Ministry of Consumer Affairs or Ministry of Consumer Affairs revealed that now India has become the largest producer. India has become the world's largest producer of sugar. Okay. So, this, so this, uh, the, uh, this position was earlier held by Brazil. Okay. Now, India had overtaken the Brazil and now India is the largest producer of the sugar and also the largest consumer of the sugar. So, what is the India's rank in the world as a sugar exporter? The question is asked, not asking about the uh, rank in production, uh, rank in production, but the, they are asking about the, what is the rank of India as a sugar exporter? So, India is the second largest sugar exporter. India is the second largest sugar exporter in the world. And if somebody asks in which state sugar cane is produced, so <coughs> highest producer of sugar cane, then the, your answer will be UP is the largest. UP is the largest. UP is the largest producer of. UP is the largest producer of sugar cane in India. UP is the largest producer of sugar cane in India. And if somebody asks in which state the largest number of sugar mills are operating in India. So, sugar uh, UP has UP has largest number of highest number of sugar mills in India. UP has highest number of sugar mills in India. Sugar mills in India. So, earlier the top place was held by the Brazil, but now the top place is held by the uh, held by India in sugar production. And also India is the second, uh, India is the largest consumer of the sugar. Hmm. So, here comes the next question for you. Uh, question is, the first state in India to go uh, to launch Gati Shakti portal on the 6th October 2022. Hmm. Can you tell me the correct answer for this question? Very important question for the examinations for you. Okay. What is Gati Shakti master plan? Okay. Recently, the government of India has launched, launched Gati Shakti. Gati Shakti master plan. Gati Shakti Master plan was, uh, plan was launched by the government of India uh, in uh, <coughs> 2021 and in the recent budget, the Gati Shakti plan has been emphasized very much and they, uh, it, is, uh, it is having seven engines. Okay? It is having the seven engines and Gati Shakti is among the four pillars of the budget which was announced by the Nirmala Sitaraman. So, Gati Shakti master plan is bringing 16 ministries of 16 
ministries together okay 16 ministries of government of india together and they will help in the infrastructure development okay they will help in the infrastructure development of india infra structure development of infrastructure development of india so which is the first state to <coughs> launch gati shakti portal here the correct answer for this question is gujarat okay gujarat is the first state to launch the gati shakti portal hmm. now come to the question number 11 here the question number 11 is asking in october 2022 union minister uh, union home ministry announced the grant of scheduled tribe status to hill community of which of the following states okay so <coughs> hill community of which of the following state has been granted the status of scheduled tribes scheduled tribes okay so in india there are <coughs> <coughs> there is reservations given for the uh, communities in india in the in obc sc st and you can say the uh, next one is economically backward section okay economically weaker section hmm. and the other category is general category in which no reservation is given to any of the individuals okay so which community or which uh, which states him uh, hill community has been given the status of scheduled tribes kindly give me the correct answer for this question nagaland jammu and kashmir tamil nadu and kerala kindly give me the correct answer for this question hmm. what will be the correct answer for this question So the correct answer for this question is Jammu Kashmir. Okay, Jammu Kashmir, Jammu Kashmir Hill community has been given the scheduled tribe status. Okay, so Jammu Kashmir has been separated. Uh, Jammu Kashmir <coughs> now has been given a status of Indian territory along with the Union territory of Ladakh. Okay, so earlier there was a state of Jammu Kashmir, but now there are two Union territories, Jammu and Kashmir, and the <coughs> Ladakh. Okay, so the thirty first of October. So, okay, the 31st of October, you should remember that uh, Jammu Kashmir was established, okay, on 31st of October, 31st of October, Jammu Kashmir was established, Jammu Kashmir was established and on the same day, Ladakh was established as a union territory or set up as a union territory of India. So, what is the significance of the 31st October? Okay, the announcement, uh, the, <coughs> the abrogation of the article 370 was done on the 5th of August 2019. So, the why, so why the government has decided to give the uh, union territory status only on the 31st of October. So, 31st of the October is the, uh, say celebrated as National Unity Day. Okay, 31st of October, 31st of October is celebrated as National Unity Day. Okay, it is celebrated as National Unity Day national unity day and it is the birthday of it is the birthday of shri ballabh bhai patel okay shri ballabh bhai patel okay so you should remember for your upcoming examination <clears throat> and who is the who is the governor of who is the governor or you can say the lg LG is Manoj Sinha. LG is Manoj. LG is Manoj Sinha. Okay. And the first LG. First LG was. Hmm, tell me first LG. First LG was GC Murmu. Okay. The first LG was GC Murmu of the Jammu and Kashmir. And who is the. Who is the. <coughs> Ladakh LG. The answer will be. R.K. Mathur. Radha Krishna Mathur is the Ladakh Lieutenant Governor. Now, let's move to the next question from here. So, the question number 12 is talking about in which of the following countries more than 66 children have been di have died due to the consumption of India made cough syrup on October 2022. So, India made cough syrups are banned. <coughs> so, so uh, there are uh, there is a number of uh, cough syrups that has been banned by the World Health Organization. World Health Organization banned some 
कफ सिरप्स कफ सिरप ऑफ इंडिया नाउ दे कैन नॉट बी सॉल्ड इन एनी ऑफ द कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ओके सो हु हैज बैंड द आंसर विल बी डब्ल्यू एच ओ सो इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंट्रीज द मिस हैपनिंग वॉज हेल्थ ओके सो इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंट्रीज घाना यूथोपिया एंड गांबिया एंड केनिया so in which countries the children had died due to the consumption of india made cough syrup in october 2022 so the uh, correct answer will be gambia correct answer will be gambia okay and every year on 7th of april we celebrate the world health day okay every year we help, <coughs> we celebrate on world health day world health day is celebrated every year on 7th of april and it is the <coughs> inception date of world health organization now question number 13 question number 13 what is talking about which of the following states has announced the creation of the world's largest jungle safari park in 70 uh, september 2022 okay so you have to uh, give the answer which state has announced the world's uh, creation of the world's largest jungle safari world's largest jungle safari park in september 2022 okay हियर द ऑप्शन आर मध्य प्रदेश हरियाणा राजस्थान और उत्तर प्रदेश ऑप्शन हेयर आर मध्य प्रदेश हरियाणा राजस्थान एंड उत्तर प्रदेश सो हेयर द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज काइंडली कमेंट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स वॉट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन वॉट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन काइंडली कमेंट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स वॉट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर काइंडली कमेंट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स इज एनी बडी नो द आंसर so the questions are really tough nobody is giving the answers hmm tell me the questions are really uh, tough for your examinations so this is the level of the examinations uh, these kind of questions are asked in several examinations in recent uh, recent <coughs> months hmm so yeah the correct answer for this question is haryana so haryana is establishing the world's largest single safari park uh, largest single safari park so recently you have heard about the kuno national park <coughs> okay you have heard about the kuno national park kuno national park kuno national park is a place where the cheetah were introduced on the 7th or 17th september okay kuno national park is the place where where cheetah were introduced where cheetah <coughs> were introduced in india okay cheetah cheetah were reintroduced cheetah were reintroduced in india in kuno national park on the date of 17th of september and 17th of september is the birthday of prime minister narendra modi okay so kuno national park is situated in which place the answer will be madhya pradesh the answer will be madhya pradesh okay and <clears throat> there is also a national park known as kanha national park okay so there do so both are different the one is kuno national park and the other one is kanha national park both are situated in madhya pradesh but the cheetah were reintroduced in kuno national park and <coughs> the country they were imported are namibia okay they are imported from the country of namibia that comes in african continent okay now let's move to the next question So here the question number fourteen is asking about on which of the following date five G services were launched in the country by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the sixth India Mobile Conference. <coughs> so the sixth India Mobile Congress was held at New Delhi. Okay, you should remember that the sixth mobile new uh, sixth India Mobile Congress was held at New Delhi. Okay, so <coughs> the question is asking about the date on which the five G services were launched in India. 30th of September, 1st of October, 2nd of October, and October 3. So, what will be the correct answer for this question? Hmm. So, here the correct answer for this question is on October 1st. On October 1st, the 5G services were launched in India <coughs> by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and which is the first company which which is the first company which has launched the 5G services in India? The company is Airtel. Okay, the company is Airtel, which has recently launched the 5G services in India. okay so china <coughs> china us and uh, uk have more sophisticated hmm, october new delhi okay sohani october new delhi 
<coughs> so china has more so uh, china is the country which has more sophisticated 5g technology in the world most sophisticated technology of the 5g on which of the following date international day of non violence is observed every year very important question international day of non violence is celebrated every year on the 28th september 28th september 21st september 2nd of september uh, sorry 2nd of october and october 3 what will be the correct answer for this question hmm shohani namaskar hmm what will be the correct answer for this question kindly give me the correct answer for this question okay the correct answer for this question is 2nd of october international day of non violence is celebrated on the event of birth anniversary of <coughs> mahatma gandhi and the date is 2nd of october if somebody ask international peace day okay international peace day so the international peace day is celebrated on 21st of september okay international peace day is celebrated on 21st of september so peace and non violence both are the different things okay so peace and non violence both are the different things and the <coughs> international peace day is celebrated on 21st of september and international day of non violence is celebrated on 2nd of october hmm who among the following scored more than 11000 runs in t20 format of the cricket in october 2022 So question is asking about the more than eleven thousand runs in T Twenty format of cricket in October twenty twenty two. Sikhar Dhawan, Kiran Pollard, Shoaib Malik, and Virat Kohli. What will be the correct answer for this question? What will be the correct answer for this question? <coughs> hmm. Can you give me the correct answer for this question? Yes, Virat Kohli is the correct answer. Okay, Virat Kohli is the correct answer for this question. And if we talk, so he is the first Indian to achieve this. <coughs> And if we talk about Chris Gayle, Chris Gayle, Chris Gayle has fourteen thousand six hundred fifty-two runs, six thousand four hundred six thousand fourteen thousand six hundred fifty-two runs. and he is the most <coughs> he is the man who had, <coughs> who had scored most runs in t20 format with 14652 runs and he is from no option number uh, sriya vara option number 1 is not correct answer for this question okay and chris gail is from which country chris gail uh, chris gail is from which uh, which country hmm can you tell me the correct answer so chris gail here is from he is from west indies okay he is from west indies now question number 17 question number 17 which country has been acquitted <coughs> by the united nations human right council on 6th october 2022 for alleged human rights violations against uyghur and other muslims okay so which country has been alleged by the united nations human right council unhcr for the violations of human rights against uyghurs and other muslims hmm so what will be the correct answer for this question here the options are north korea united states of america china and russia what will be the correct answer for this question what will be the correct answer for this question can you tell me <coughs> so 
So here the correct answer. Uh, kindly give me the correct answer in the comment box. So here the correct answer for this question is China. Okay. In China, Uyghur Muslims and other Muslims have been uh, <clears throat> they have been facing many at atrocities in the China, and they are not allowed to read Quran and they are not allowed to uh, pray in mosque or they cannot make a built a mosque in the China. So the uh, so the uh, <clears throat> Conditions of Muslims and especially the Uyghur Muslims is very much uh, uh, serious in the Xi'an 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 province. Okay, so these this is the province of the China Xi'an Xi'an in which Uyghurs and other Muslims live, and they are not living very happily, or they are not living a uh, <coughs> prosperous life prosperous life in China. Okay, so question number eighteen. The Nobel Peace Prize for the year 2022 was announced by the Norwegian Nobel Committee. Which of the following is not included in the list? Okay. So, options here are Alice Velatsky, Barrett Rees Anderson, Center for Liberties, Civil Liberties, and option number 4, option number 1, 2, and 3. So, you have to answer with that which of the following is not included. Which of the following is not included in the list? Okay. Who has been who has not been given the Nobel Prize in Peace? <clears throat> so you should remember that there are six Nobel Prizes. There are six Nobels and uh, given by the <clears throat> Nobel Prize Committee, Nobel Prize Committee, and the Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel Peace Prize was given. Nobel Peace Prize given in Oslo and Oslo is the capital of Norway and all other are given in Stockholm. All other are presented, all other are presented in Stockholm that is Sweden <clears throat> okay so option number D is not the correct answer for this question option number B is correct in this question Barrett Reese Anderson is not the correct answer he is not included in the list and in this <clears throat> and in the place of Barrett Reese Anderson the correct answer here is memorial okay memorial group is given the Nobel Peace Prize this year in 2022. Who among the following has been given? Who has who among the following has been selected as the men's Fitch Player of the Year 2021 by the International Hockey Hockey Regulator FH on 7th of October 2022? So kindly give me the correct answer. Ton D. Nuzer, Arthur Van Doren, Jamie Dewar, and Harman Preet Singh. Harman Preet Singh. Who has been selected as the Fitch Men's Player of the Year 2021-2022 by the Fitch or you can say the regulator of hockey worldwide? Hmm. What will be the correct answer for this question? Okay, uh, question, uh, some uh, people are giving the option D. Okay, the, uh, here, the, here the correct answer is option number D. Option number D is the correct answer for this question. Harman Preet Singh has been accorded the Fitch Men's Player of the Year 2021-22. Now, question number 20. With which country did All India Institute of Ayurveda sign MOU to promote cooperation in the research of Ayurveda and traditional medicine. Okay. So, with which country Indian <coughs> India uh, has signed an MOU to promote cooperation on the research on Ayurveda and traditional medicine. Okay. So, we have a ministry of Ayus. Okay. We have a ministry of Ayus and Ayus here means that Ayurveda Ayurveda is 
یونانی سدھا اینڈ ہومیوپیتھی ہومیو پیتھی اوکے آئی یو سیئر سٹینڈ فور آیورویدہ یونانی سدھا اینڈ ہومیوپیتھی سو انڈیا ہیز پروموٹنگ دا انڈیا ہیز دا انڈین گورنمنٹ ہیز پروموٹنگ اور دا انڈیا ہیز پروموٹنگ دا یوز آف ٹریڈیشنل میڈیسن اور آیورویدہ ان کیورنگ دا لائف تھریٹننگ ڈیزیزز اور یو کین سی دا لائف دیز آر دا ٹیکنکس دیٹ ور ڈیولپڈ انڈیا سچ ایز آیورویدہ اور یو کین سی سدھا ان دس دا نیچرل ہربس آر یوز فار ٹریٹنگ دا ڈیزیزز آف دا پیشنٹس اوکے سو ہیئر دا کریکٹ آنسر فار دس کوشچن از جاپان اوکے انڈیا سائنڈ ہیز انڈیا سائنڈ این ایم او یو ود دا جاپان ٹو پروموٹ کوپریشن ان دا ریسرچ آف آیورویدا اینڈ ٹریڈیشنل میڈیسن سو لاٹ آف میڈیک لاٹ آف میڈیکل ٹورسٹ از کمنگ ان انڈیا فار کیورنگ دیئر ڈیزیزز ود دا ہیلپ آف آیورویدا اینڈ نیچوروپیتھی اوکے سو انڈیا ہیڈ ڈیولپ دس کائنڈ آف میڈیکیشن ان دا ویدک ایرا وچ آف دا فالوئنگ انڈین اسپورٹس واز لانچ ان دا تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس آن سیونتھ آف اکٹوبر ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی ٹو اوکے سو دا کوشچن تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس آن دا ڈیٹ سیونتھ اکٹوبر وچ گیم ہیز بین انڈکٹیڈ ان دا تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس سو ان دس گیم تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس فائیو ٹریڈیشنل گیمس فائیو ٹریڈیشنل گیمس فائیو ٹریڈیشنل گیمس ور انکلوڈیڈ فائیو ٹریڈیشنل گیمس ور انکلوڈیڈ ان دا تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس سو آل دیز آر انکلوڈیڈ ان دا تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس دا کوشچن از آسکنگ اباؤٹ آن دا سیونتھ آف اکٹوبر سو آن سیونتھ آف اکٹوبر یوگا کالاری پٹ پائٹ ملکھم اور گٹکا وچ از وچ ہیز بین انڈکٹیڈ وچ ہیز بین انڈکٹیڈ اوکے سو ہیئر دا کریکٹ آنسر از ملکھم کریکٹ آنسر از ملکھم سو دا فائیو ٹریڈیشنل گیمس دیٹ ور انکلوڈیڈ ان دا تھرٹی سکس نیشنل گیمس آف انڈیا اور یو کین سی دیٹ ور ہیلڈ ان گجرات سو ون از ملکھم مل کھمب دس از دا فرسٹ اینڈ سیکنڈ از کلاری پائٹ کلاری کلاری پائٹ and you have seen the Vidhu Jambal. Vindu, Vidhu Jambal is the promoter of Kalari Pite, Gatka. Okay. And fourth one is Thangta. Thangta. And fifth one is Yoga. So these are the traditional games of India which were included in the fifth, uh, fifth uh, 36th National Games of India. Malakham is, <coughs> Malakham is famous in Northern India. Okay, it is famous in Northern India. Kalari Pite, it is famous in South. Gatka, it is famous in Punjab. Thangta in Manipur. And Yoga is famous worldwide. Yoga is famous worldwide. So you should remember that these five games that were included in the 36 national games and these were held in Gujarat. Okay. Hmm. So what was the mascot? What was the mascot of 36 national games? So answer will be Savage. Okay, the answer will be Savage. Savage is the mascot of the 36 national games. And who is the winner? Then the winner are services. Okay, services are the winner in the <coughs> 36 national games. And 37th national games, 37th national games will be going to held in Goa. 36th national games will be held in Goa. Now let's move to the next question. Why which of the following year Indian Railways has planned to achieve net zero carbon emission? So this question was uh, discussed earlier <coughs> events of the current affairs session. By which year Indian Railway is going to be net zero carbon emitter? By which year Indian Railway is going to be net zero carbon emitter? So here the uh, options are very much important question. 2025. 2028, 2023, 30, 2035. So what will be the correct answer for this question? What will be the correct answer for this question? So here the correct answer for this question is 2030. Okay. 
So, <coughs> so India, uh, Indian Railway uh, has planned to achieve net zero carbon emission by 2030, and they will be using the uh, they will be using the <coughs> renewable sources energy to run their rail, uh, railways, and they are not using the diesel locomotives that are emitting a uh, lot of carbon in the environment of the earth. Now, let's move to the 23rd question. Which of the following was allowed to start a separate social stock exchange by the stock market regulator SEBI in October 2022? Hmm. So, the question is asking, so the question, huh, yes, 2030 is the correct answer for this question. Hmm, 2030. So, question is asking about the which stock which stock exchange has been allowed to run a separate stock exchange known as social stock exchange by the stock market regulator. Here the options are Badodra Stock Exchange, Badodra, Ahmedabad Stock Exchange, Bangalore Stock Exchange and Bombay Stock Exchange. Kindly give me the correct answer for this question. Question number, uh, question number 23. What will be the correct answer for this question? Question number 43. Yes, question number 43, what will be the correct answer? No, <coughs> option number A is not the correct answer. So honey, it is wrong. So, honey, it is the wrong answer. So, here the correct answer for this question is Bombay Stock Exchange that is BSE or <coughs> it is popularly known as BSE. Okay. Now, let, let's discuss some more important. Yes, Sriya Bara, option number 4 is the correct answer for this question. So, <coughs> let's discuss about BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange. Okay. Bombay Stock Exchange was established in 1875. Okay. Established in 1875. Five, as the native shares native shares and stock brokers association and stock brokers associations okay and it is headquartered at it is headquartered at Dalal Street. It is headquartered at Dalal Street and now the chairman of BSC is SS Mundra. Chairman is SS Mundra. So, okay, he was the earlier, he earlier served as the deputy governor of the Reserve Bank of India. Okay, and this is the Asia's oldest stock exchange. Asia's <coughs> oldest stock exchange. Okay.
okay so these are these all are the uh, concepts of the points which you should remember for examinations that are being asked in the several examinations such as in which year vsc was established then the answer will be 1875 and what was the actual name of the vsc the native shares and stock brokers association and it is headquartered at dalal street and dalal street is in mumbai okay dalal street is in mumbai okay and who is the chairman of the bsc ss mundra and if somebody ask who is the md and ceo of bsc so the answer will be nobody is the current uh, ceo and md of the bsc because Asis Kumar Chauhan, who is serving as the MD and CEO of BSC, has resigned and he had joined the National Stock Exchange or NSE and it is the Asia's oldest stock exchange and men behind the <coughs> idea of the stock exchange was Prem Chand Raichand. Prem Chand Raichand and he is the same person, okay. These are, these both are not the uh, <coughs> other person, he is, he is the single person, Prem Chand Raichand is an individual. And he is a cotton merchant that who has started this institution and index is sensitive index which is uh, which is known as sensex and it includes 30 companies and these companies are known as blue chip companies okay these known as blue chip companies and <clears throat> let's discuss more about uh, national stock exchange or NSE national stock exchange or NSE okay national stock exchange or nse so it, the <coughs> stock exchange was established in stock exchange was established in 1992 established in 1992 functional in 1994 functional in 1994 recommended by It was recommended by MJ Ferwani Committee. Okay, it was recommended by the MJ Ferwani Committee. <coughs> you should remember. And what is the index? Here index is Nifty. Here index is Nifty for this stock exchange. Okay. And uh, Nifty contains 50 companies. It contains 50 companies. Okay. And it is the first stock exchange. First stock exchange. To start. online trading okay so it is the first stock exchange which has started the online trading in india and this is known as screen based trading in screen based trading or you can say svt okay now let's move to the next question <clears throat> so here the uh, 24 question is in october 2022 the first global drone expo 2022 was organized at which of the following places okay what are the drone drones are the uh, drones are known as drones are known as unmanned aerial vehicle are known as unmanned aerial vehicle or uav okay so <clears throat> drones are operated by the uh, operated by the uh, person or you can say the uh, an individual on the <coughs> land and they are driverless aeroplanes or you can say driverless sorry pilotless aeroplanes so now a more emphasis is given on the development on the drones so that we can be uh, self-reliant on the manufacturing of drones and it will help in the uh, <coughs> in the security of the India and also in the uh, field of agriculture okay and in some countries drones are used for the delivery of goods in the cities so the global drone expo was organized at which place kindly give me the correct answer Tokyo Paris Chennai Bangalore okay Tokyo Paris Chennai Bangalore what is the correct answer for this question 
वॉट इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन श्रेया बारा ऑप्शन नंबर वन टोक्यो ओके नॉट करेक्ट दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट ओके पैरिस नो नॉट एट ऑल सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज चेन्नई चेन्नई इज द प्लेस वेयर चेन्नई इज द प्लेस वेयर ग्लोबल ड्रोन एक्सपो ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज ओके एंड रिसेंटली चेस ओलंपियाड वॉज ऑल्सो ऑर्गेनाइज चेस Olympiad was also organized at Chennai. So here the correct answer for this question is Chennai. And who is the civil aviation minister? Who is the civil aviation minister? Who is the civil aviation minister in India? Hmm. Can you tell me the correct answer? Who is the? Uh, yes, Suhani. Chennai is the correct answer. Option number C. So, <coughs> hmm. who is the civil aviation minister? Then the answer will be Jyoti Raditya Sindhya. ओके ज्योतिरादित्य ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया इज द सिविल एविशन मिनिस्टर इन इंडिया एंड हु इज द आईटी मिनिस्टर हु इज द आईटी मिनिस्टर इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी द आंसर विल बी अश्विनी अश्विनी बैष्णव अश्विनी Bashnav is the IT minister, hmm. and he is also holding the Ministry of Communications and Railways. Now let's move to the next question. FIFA Under 17 Women's World Cup 2022 is being organized from 11 to 30th of October 2022 at which of the following places? Earlier, the FIFA announced now FIFA has announced that they are not going to organize uh, <coughs> Under 17 Women's World Cup 2022 in India. And uh, the Indians have started boycotting the FIFA World Cup 2022, and the, uh, and they uh, later revoked their decision, and they said they are going to organize Under 17 World Cup, Under 17 Women's World Cup 2022 in India. So what what are the places at which the event is being organized? Here options are Bhubaneswar, Navi Mumbai, Goa. Option number four, option one, two, and three. What is the correct answer for this question? Sriyavara, Monica, Talapu, uh, Reddy, uh, Sohani. What is the correct answer for this question? So the Under 17 Women's World Cup is being organized at both uh, uh, all these three places: Bhubaneswar, Navi Mumbai, and Goa. Okay, and the event was inaugurated by our Sports Minister Sri Anurag Singh Thakur. Anurag Singh Thakur at Bhubaneswar. Okay. Now let's move to the other question. Question number twenty-six. Which of the following banks launched a smart wire for speedy Swift-based remittances in October two thousand twenty-two? So, <clears throat> ha, Monica, Talapuredi, option number four. Yes, yes, yes. Option number four is the correct answer for this question. So, a smart wire has been launched by which of the following banks for the speedy transmission, uh, speedy remittances? Hmm. All are the correct answer. HDFC Bank, Yes Bank, ICIC Bank, Bank of India. Kindly, correct, uh, kindly give me the correct answer for this question. So, what do you understand by SWIFT? What do you understand by the SWIFT? So, SWIFT stands for SWIFT stands for Society for Worldwide Society for Worldwide. Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Okay, SWIFT so stands for Society for Worldwide, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, and it is headquartered in. Brussels, Belgium. Okay, it is headquartered in Brussels, Belgium, and it was established in nineteen seventy three. Nineteen seventy three. So here the correct answer for this question is ICICI Bank. Okay, ICICI Bank. So <clears throat> the question uh, for the smart buyer is not really important. 
बट द रियली इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन दिस क्वेश्चन इज स्विफ्ट ओके सो रिसेंटली रशिया वॉज बैड फ्रॉम द स्विफ्ट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दे आर नॉट एबल टू गेट देयर फंड गेट देयर रेमिटेंसिस इन द रशिया एंड देयर करेंसी डेप्रिशिएटेड एट अ वेरी हाई स्पीड यस आई सी आई बैंक इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन ओके सो वॉट इज दॉट इज द टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ स्विफ्ट so uh, swift uh, swift is a technology which is used to uh, which is used to uh, use for the remittances from one country to the other okay just like uh, ifsc just like ifsc in india the swift is uh, swift is used in the worldwide inter worldwide interbank interbank uh, remittances okay so if somebody ask how many characters in swift code okay how many characters in swift code the answer will be here from 8 or 11 okay there are 8 or 11 characters in swift code which is used in the remittances from one country to the other and if somebody ask ifsc code there are <coughs> there are 11 characters okay in ifsc code there are 11 characters <coughs> 11 characters if somebody ask what are the characters in MICR code, then the answer will be nine. Kindly give me the correct correct expansion of IFSC and MICR. I am waiting. Okay. Kindly give me the correct. Kindly give me the correct expansion of IFSC and MICR. Hmm. I am waiting for your answer. I am waiting for your answer. so what will be the correct expansion of micr and ifsc kindly give me the correct answer the micr and ifsc are asked in several exams Hmm. Is the thing is really very tough? Nobody is giving the answer. <coughs> okay, nobody is giving the answer. Now it's my turn to give the correct answer of this. IFSC stands for IFSC stands for Indian Financial System Code. Okay, IFSC stands for Indian Financial System Code. indian financial system code okay nobody has given the correct answer and what does the i uh, micr means micr means here magnetic ink character recognition <coughs> magnetic ink character recognition मैग्नेटिक इंक करेक्टर रिकॉग्निशन इज द करेक्ट एक्सपेंशन ऑफ एम आई सी आर ओके नाउ लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो हियर कम्स द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर यू इन अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू द करेंट चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया उदय उमेश ललित हैज रिकमेंडेड द नेम ऑफ द यूनियन मिनिस्टर हैज रिकमेंडेड the name of okay there is a mistake in the question recommended the name of dash dash to the union union home minister <coughs> union minister of law and justice as his successor okay so you have to uh, give the answer you have to give the answer okay here the answer is third bill uh, yes yes the correct answer is dy chandrachoon dy Chandrachoon is the uh, successor of the Justice Uday Omesh Lalit or U U Lalit. So he will be the fiftieth C J I. He will be the fiftieth C J I. So <clears throat> can you answer me the uh, can you answer me the article associated with the associated with the Supreme Court of India? Can you give me the answer? Can you give me the uh, article which is associated with the establishment of the supreme court of india 
which is the article of the constitution which is related to the establishment of supreme court in india hmm. what will be the article kindly give me the correct answer for this question <clears throat> and supreme court of india was established on supreme court of india was established on 26th of january 1950 26th of january 1950 and since 1937 to 1950 an organization was working in the india that is known as federal court okay that is known as federal court in new delhi hmm. option c is the correct answer dhananjay ashwand chandrashun is the correct answer no <coughs> article 51 is not the correct answer so article 124 okay article 124 is related with the establishment of the supreme court okay so let's discuss more about the supreme court because several things are asked from the supreme court okay so we have discussed the article so we have discussed the article article 1 124 is uh, related with the establishment of supreme court of india and if we talk about <coughs> number of judges judges in supreme court so the number is 33 plus 1 that is 34 okay so there are total 34 judges in the supreme court of india yes sohani article 124 is the correct answer okay <coughs> uh, 34 judges in the supreme court of india one is cgi and other 33 are judges in the supreme court okay so first first judge of supreme court who is he H. J. Kanya. H. J. Kanya is the first judge of the Supreme Court, or you can say the first CGI of the Supreme Court. Okay. Hmm. Yes, 124 is the correct answer. Swani, 124 is the correct answer. And what is the eligibility to become a judge in Supreme Court? Eligibility to become A judge in Supreme Court. Judge in Supreme Court. Supreme Court. What are the eligibilities? What are the eligibilities? Then the answer for this question is, then the answer for this question is, he must be a citizen of India. He must be a citizen of India. The first thing, very compulsory. And <coughs> experience of experience of judge sorry minimum experience of Five years as a judge in high court. Okay, minimum experience of five years as a judge in high court. It, it, it is the first, or oh, sorry, second necessity, and minimum experience of ten years as an advocate in high court okay so these are the three basic necessities to become a uh, supreme court of judges in india so in this uh, second and third only one thing is needed okay either you have either you can have five years of <coughs> experiences as judge in the high court or you can have minimum experience of 10 years as an advocate in high court okay so <coughs> and what is the retirement age what is the retirement age? What is the retirement age? Okay, the answer is 65 years. Answer is 65 years. Okay, after 65 years, you are going to be retired from the Supreme Court of India. Now, let's move to the next question from here. Hmm. In the World Economic Outlook released, the, <coughs> released by the International Monetary Fund on October 
11, 2022, India is expected to grow, uh, India's expected growth rate in 2022, uh, 23 has been considered as, okay, very important question for your upcoming examinations, very important question for your upcoming examinations. So, what is the expected growth rate of India in FY23? Yes, 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 65 years is the correct answer for the retirement or age of the Supreme Court of, Judge of the Supreme Court of India. So, the, here the question is asking about the expected growth rate. Question is asking about the expected growth rate of India. <coughs> question is asking about the expected growth rate of India. Hmm. So, here the correct answer is 6.8 percent. Okay, 6.80 is expected growth rate as expected by the IMF in his World Economic Outlook. Okay, so this is a report. This is a report published by IMF. Okay, this is a report. Published by IMF, the World Economic Outlook. Okay. <coughs> and in this report, uh, in the, uh, PRA Oliver Gorinchas has said India will grow at a rate of 6.73 in FY, sorry, 6.80 in FY23. Okay. And Let's talk about the some more predictions given by other institutions. So, uh, UNCTAD. UNCTAD has said that India will grow at a rate of 5.7 percent, 5.7 percent, UNCTAD. And when we talk about the World Bank, World Bank has estimated India will grow at the rate of 5.7 percent. And we talk about Reserve Bank of India, Reserve Bank of India is expected India will grow at the rate of 7.00 percent okay and we talk about the IMF then it has said India will grow at the rate of 6.80 percent and when we talk about a union budget when we talk about a union budget then the answer will be 9.2 percent then the answer will be 9.2 percent so you should remember all these expected or the estimated growth rate of the India, which were predicted by the international financial organizations. So, be because these all are asked in the uh, in the examinations, okay. So, here the correct answer is uh, 8 point, uh, 6.80%. And who made this announcement, okay. So, the chief economist of IMF, okay. The chief economist of IMF, chief economist of IMF made this prediction. Chief Economist of IMF made this prediction. Okay, and who is he? He is Pierre Oliver Gorinchas. Pierre Oliver Gorinchas. Pierre Oliver Gorinchas is the uh, Chief Economist of the IMF. And who is the Chief Economist of World Bank? Who is the Chief Economist of World Bank? Okay, can you tell me the answer? Who is the chief economist of World Bank and chief financial officer and MD of World Bank? Okay. So, kindly tell me both these positions, who hold these positions, okay. Chief Economist of the World Bank and Chief Financial Officer and MD or you can say the Managing Director of the World Bank. Who hold these positions? Kindly give me the correct answer. Who hold these positions? No, nobody is giving the answer. Sriyabara, Sohani, Monica, Talapu, Reddy. Hmm. Who is the chief economist of World Bank and who is the chief uh, financial officer and MD of the World Bank? And who is the president of the World Bank? Everybody knows he is uh, David Malpas. David Malpas is the World Bank president. I am asking about the chief economist of World Bank and MD <coughs> and CFO of World Bank.
Hmm. What will be the correct answer? So the chief economist of the World Bank is Indermit Gill. Okay, he is Indermit Gill, and he is from India. And when we talk about the CMD, uh, CFO, and MD of the World Bank, then the answer will be Anshula Kant. Okay, C is from C is also from India. Okay, so you should remember these all things. Okay, who is the chief economist of the World Bank? Indermit Gill, CFO and MD of World Bank, Anshula Kant. And who is the president of World Bank? The answer is David Malpas. David Malpas. Okay, Anshula Kant, MD of the World Bank. Yes, yes, yes. Anshula Kant is the correct answer for the <coughs> MD. Now, uh, which of the following Indian cricketers was awarded ICC Player of the Month award for September 2022? Okay, very important question. Who has been awarded ICC Player of the Month award for September 2022? So here options are uh, Sikhar Dhawan, Julian Goswami, Harman, B, Harman Preet Kaur and option number 4, Yajuvendra Chahal. Yajuvendra Chahal. Hmm. What will be the correct answer for this question? So in the category of men's, in the category of men, the award went to Rizwan. Award went to Rizwan and he is hailing from Pakistan. Okay, he is hailing from Pakistan. And in the case of women, the player of the month award went to option number three, that is Harman Preet Kaur. Okay, that is Harman Preet Kaur. Yes, yes, Monica Talapu Reddy, the correct answer here is Harman Preet Kaur. Hmm. Now, let's discuss question number 30. On which of the following dates, World Arthritis Day is celebrated every year? World Arthritis Day is celebrated every year. So, what is arthritis? Okay, it is the inflammation. <clears throat> it is the inflammation of joints and it causes pain in the joints, especially in the knees. 10th of October, 11th of October, 12th of October and 13th of October. What is the correct answer for this question? What is the correct answer for this question? Monica, Ashreya and uh, Suhani. What will be the correct answer for this question? Yes, the correct answer for this question is 12th of October. 12th of October every year is celebrated as World Arthritis Day. No, option number 14 is, uh, option number 4 is not correct. Okay. Option number 14, uh, option number 4 is not correct. Suhani is the, uh, Suhani the correct option is, uh, option number 3. 12th of October is celebrated as World Arthritis Day. Now, come to the question number 31. Indian Railways, Indian Railways plans to replace fusel, uh, fossil fuel fleet with electric fleet by which of the following year? Okay, so the question is asking about the replacing of fossil fuel fleet, uh, fleet with electric fleet by which of the following year? 2025. 2028, 2030, 2032. So earlier we had discussed, discussed that Indian Railway is planning to be a net zero carbon emitter by the year 2030. Now the question is asking about which by which year in Gorbo, uh, Indian Railway is planning to be uh, replace fossil fuel fleet with electric fleet by which of the following year. So the correct answer for this question is by the year 2025 no fossil fuel fleet will be used in Indian Railways and all the fleet are run by electricity. So the correct answer for this question is question, uh, option number 1st, 2025. <coughs> question number 32. Which of the following organizations lauded the direct benefit transfer that is DBT in India on 12th of October 2022 describing it as a logistics mir miracle? Okay, very important question. and. Uh, very important question. What is DBT? DBT stands for 
डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर ओके डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर एंड द डीबीटी इज बेस्ड ऑन जैम जीबी डीबीटी इज बेस्ड ऑन जैम एंड जैम स्टैंड फॉर जैम स्टैंड फॉर जनधन जनधन अकाउंट ओके जनधन अकाउंट एंड ए हेयर स्टैंड फॉर ए हेयर स्टैंड फॉर आधार A here stands for Aadhaar and M stands for Mobile. M stands for Mobile. Okay. So the gem <coughs> is the trio which is helping in the direct benefit transfer of the government and with the help of okay uh, option number two. Yes, yes. Option number two is the correct answer. Recently, David, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Pierre Oliver Gorin Chas in the uh, briefing of the World Economic Outlook. has lauded the efforts of the government of india in the covid uh, covid 19 times that india has uh, transferred direct uh, direct financial assistance to the beneficiaries in their bank account and the event uh, or the <coughs> the whole process is possible only through the uh, direct benefit transfer you can say the jam okay so it is a very uh, you can say the uh, flexible scheme of the government of india in which uh, uh, bank accounts are opened on a large scale by the banks and these all are the zero balance account of the government okay now let's move to the other question from which of the following places did prime minister narendra modi flag of the country's fourth bande bharat express okay very important question very important question for your upcoming examinations hmm fourth bande bharat express train fourth bande bharat express train on 13th of october 2022 from which place new delhi railway station सराय रोहिला रेलवे स्टेशन दिल्ली उना रेलवे स्टेशन इन हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड देहरादून रेलवे स्टेशन व्हाट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर अपकमिंग एग्जामिनेशन मोनिका रेड्यूस मोनिका तलापू रेडी मोनिका यू आर फ्रॉम वेयर अवेयर वॉट इज योर रेजिडेंस I think uh, you are from uh, Andhra. Hmm. So, Hani, the correct answer is Himachal Pradesh. Yes. Option number three. Option number three. That is Una railway station in Himachal Pradesh. Recently, the Prime Minister of India was a was on a visit to Himachal Pradesh, and he had inaugurated several infrastructure projects in the Himachal Pradesh, and us, and he also inaugurated the sorry flagged off the fourth Bande Bharat Express from the Una <coughs> railway station. ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ओना रेलवे स्टेशन इन हिमाचल प्रदेश वेयर फोर्थ वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस इज लॉन्च ओके नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फोर स्पेस टूरिस्ट डेनेस्टी टू हैज टाइड विद विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टू फ्लाई अराउंड द मून इन अ स्टारशिप रॉकेट इन अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी सो ही इज बिकमिंग द फर्स्ट स्पेस टूरिस्ट ओके ही इज बिकमिंग द फर्स्ट स्पेस टूरिस्ट <coughs> first space tourist first space tourist okay yes andhra pradesh reddies are found in andhra pradesh it's only my guess <coughs> hmm hmm here the correct answer isro nasa spacex and roscosmos okay so isro is a space agency of india okay and nasa is also the space agency of us and space agency of us is uh, and it is roscosmos is from russia roscosmos is from russia okay so uh, and space x is the private space agency okay private space agency and all other space agencies are governed or big uh, we can say the uh, they are incorporated by the government of their respective countries option number 1 is not correct answer <coughs> sohani uh, isro is not the correct answer here the correct answer is space x okay here the correct answer is space x and space x is owned by elon musk okay who is the owner of the space x and the answer will be elon musk okay and you have heard the rocket falcon 9 Falcon it is the rocket name, famous rocket of the SpaceX. Famous rocket of SpaceX. 
famous rocket of space x famous rocket of space x is falcon okay now uh, recently isro was in news recently isro was in news why because <coughs> 36 one web satellites satellites were launched were launched <coughs> by isro okay one web and a country is from uk no uh, uh, sohani it is not a matter of concern uh, if the answer goes wrong in the practice session it is all right but the same mistake is not should be happened in the real examination okay question number 35 question number 35 which state has become the one with the first digitally literate gram panchayat okay if we uh, talk about the most literate state of india then the answer is kerala then the answer is kerala according to census 20 uh, 2011 2011 and when we are talking about the most uh, literate digital or uh, digitally literate gram panchayat then the answer is uh, option number a kerala or karnataka or uh, bihar or haryana so haryana is absolutely not not in the answer and bihar is also not in the answer so there are two options which are remaining which is uh, one is kerala and other one is karnataka so here the correct answer is kerala okay kerala is the correct answer for this question and it had become the first digitally literate gram panchayat okay sorry <coughs> pallam pallu i think the pallam pallu is the gram panchayat which is becoming the first digitally literate gram panchayat in the india okay who has been appointed as the director general of crpf who has been appointed as the director general of crpf ratananda sujay lal thausen girish patel manish paul okay what is the correct answer for this question who has been appointed as the director general of crpf ratan tata sujay <coughs> lal thausen <coughs> girish <coughs> girish patel manish paul Hmm. So CRPF is uh, CRPF stands for Central Reserve Police Force. Central Reserve Police Force. Okay, CRPF stands for Central uh, Central. Hmm. Yes, Sohani. The correct answer is Sujay Lal. Okay, correct answer is Sujay Lal. Thaison has been. appointed as the director general of crpf recently by the government of india okay question number 37 question number 37 international day of older persons is being observed on which state of on which date international day of older persons is being organized or oh, sorry being observed on which date october 1 october 4 october 5 october 10 what is the correct answer for this question Hmm. Hmm. What will be the correct answer? Uh, Monica Reddy, option number four. Oh, sorry, option number A. Okay, yes, option number one is the correct answer for this question. International Day of Older Persons is being observed on October first every year, and October two is celebrated as international day of non violence international day of non violence every year now go to the question number 38 india ranked at which of the which at which places for the first time in the uh, for the first time in the global 
इंडिया रैंक एट विच प्लेस फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स रैंकिंग सो वॉट इज द रैंक ऑफ इंडिया इन ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स रैंकिंग एंड इट इज पब्लिश बाय ओके व्हाट वी द करेक्ट आंसर थर्टी नाइन्थ फोर्टी थर्टी फिफ्थ एंड फिफ्टी नाइन्थ श्रेया बारह ऑप्शन नंबर सी नॉट करेक्ट नॉट करेक्ट थर्टी नाइन नॉट करेक्ट मालिका तलापुर रेड्डी थर्टी नाइन इज नॉट करेक्ट आंसर व्हाट बी द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन सो हियर द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज फोर्टी ओके सो इन द रिसेंटली कंडक्टेड रिसेंटली रिलीज रिलीज ग्लोबल इनोवेशन इंडेक्स रैंकिंग इंडिया हैज स्कोर्ड द रैंक ऑफ फोर्टी एंड इट हैज बीन रिलीज बाय World Intellectual Property Organization. Okay, World Intellectual Property Organization. World Intellectual Property Organization. Okay, so forty is the correct answer for this question. Now let's. Uh, and where is where is the headquarter of the uh, wipo wipo's headquarter is in geneva switzerland okay geneva switzerland is the headquarter of wipo now let's move to the next question which one became the cleanest city in the country for the sixth time in a row okay the question is asking about the cleanest city for the sixth time in a row faridabad indore bhopal devgarh ऑप्शन नंबर बी दैट इज इंदौर ये श्रेया बारा द ऑप्शन नंबर बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इन द रिसेंटली कंडक्टेड स्वच्छ भारत सर्वेक्षण स्वच्छ भारत सर्वेक्षण इंदौर हैज बिकम द क्लीनेस्ट सिटी फॉर द सिक्स टाइम इन अ रो क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी विच स्टेट गवर्नमेंट लॉन्च द आसरा पेंशन स्कीम विच स्टेट गवर्नमेंट लॉन्च द आसरा पेंशन स्कीम हरियाणा तेलंगाना केरला असम हरियाणा केरला तेलंगाना असम Hmm. Which state has launched the Asra Pension Scheme? Haryana, Telangana, Kerala, Assam. So the correct answer for this question is. <coughs> so the correct answer for this question is Telangana. Okay, Telangana. Here is the correct answer for this question. Telangana has become uh, Telangana has launched the Asra Pension Scheme recently uh, in the state of Telangana. Okay, forty one. Which airport was renamed as Sahid Bhagat Singh International Airport? Which airport, which airport has was renamed as uh, Sahid Bhagat Singh International Airport? Here options are Kochi Airport, Chandigarh Airport, New Delhi Airport, and Hyderabad Airport. Okay, what will be the correct answer for this question? What will be the correct answer for this question? Kochi Airport, Chandigarh Airport, New Delhi Airport, and Hyderabad Airport. what will be the correct answer for this question so the correct answer for this question is chandigarh airport okay so the uh, <clears throat> government of chandigarh punjab and haryana has decided that they are going to rename the uh, chandigarh airport as sahid bhagat singh international airport and the <coughs> renaming has been passed by the <coughs> government of india so the ayodhya so the ayodhya Airport has all has also been renamed as uh, renamed as Manada Purushottam Sri Ram Airport. Who has who was the who was at the top of Hurun's under forty rich list? Okay, question number forty two. Who was at the top of Hurun's under forty rich list? Manish Malik, Priya Dutt, Nikhil Kamath, and Ganesh Vasist. 
वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन अंडर फोर्टी रिच लिस्ट विच वॉज रिलीज बाई हु एंड हु वॉज एट द टॉप ऑफ दिस लिस्ट एंड ही इज फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड ही इज फ्रॉम इंडिया वॉट बिलीव द करेक्ट आंसर मनीष मलिक प्रिया दत्ता निखिल कामत एंड गणेश वर्षिस्टर so the founder of rich zeroda the founder of zeroda <coughs> founder of zeroda and what are what is zeroda founder of zeroda nikhil kamath is at the top of hurun's under 40 rich list <coughs> manish malik is not the correct answer for this question okay and it is a discount broker it is the discount broker okay now let's move to the other question portion abhiyan was launched in which year portion abhiyan was launched in which year kindly give me the correct answer for this question 2020 2018 2022 2019 what will be the correct answer for this question <coughs> what will be the correct answer for this question portion abhiyan portion abhiyan was launched in which year 2020 2018 2022 2019 hmm what is the correct answer for this question so the <coughs> correct answer for this question portion abhiyan was launched in 2018 to uh, remove the curse of malnutrition <coughs> okay it is started to cure the children from malnutrition and undernutrition okay under <coughs> nutrition now let's move to the next question from here hmm. which one is the name of recently inducted indigenously developed light combat helicopter in the indian air force at the air force station jodhpur very important question for your examinations okay so it is the it is india's first light combat helicopter which is indigenously developed by the by the <coughs> hindustan aeronautics limited and it has been inducted in indian air force station jodhpur what is the name of this helicopter light combat helicopter okay the light combat aircraft of india is tejas and the tejas 2.0 uh, manufacturing is also started by the uh, hindustan aeronautics limited what is the name of the this uh, akash akash is not the correct answer <coughs> okay so these two are missiles these two are missiles okay the name of this helicopter is prachand the name of this helicopter is prachand okay sriyabara akash is not the correct answer the <clears throat> uh, if you are following the uh, twitter handle of the defense minister of india the prachand or uh, teaser of the prachand the teaser of the present was uh, uh, available on his twitter handle okay now let me put the other question who has been appointed as the deputy election commissioner who has been appointed as the deputy election commissioner <coughs> so uh, here options are harish patel vishwas singh rajnath singh and ajay badu yes yes sohani the correct answer is prachand yes sohani the correct answer is prachand <coughs> hmm. so here the correct answer for this question is ajay badu okay ajay badu is the deputy election commissioner of the election commission of india so the <coughs> article related to the election commission of india is article 324 okay when we talk about the election commission when we talk about the election commission <coughs> article related or uh, article associated with is with it is article 324 article 324 and it was established on 25th of january 1950 25th of january 1950 and 25th of january every year is celebrated as 25th of january every year is celebrated as national voters day 
ओके इट इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज नेशनल वोटर्स डे ओके एंड हु इज द चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर एंड हु इज द चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर और सीईसी द आंसर विल बी राजीव कुमार द आंसर हेयर विल बी राजीव कुमार एंड हु इज द इलेक्शन कमिश्नर एंड हु इज द इलेक्शन कमिश्नर देन द आंसर विल बी अनूप चंद्र पांडे अनूप चंद्र पांडे ओके एंड द सीट ऑफ नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन कमिश्नर इज वैकेंड सो देर आर थ्री थ्री सो इट इज अ थ्री मेंबर बॉडी ओके सो इट इज अ थ्री मेंबर बॉडी ऑफ इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर इलेक्शन कमिश्नर एंड इलेक्शन कमिश्नर एंड वन इलेक्शन कमिश्नर इज पोस्ट इज बैक एंड ओके सो यू शुड रिमेंबर दीज ऑल आर द थिंग एंड हु द फर्स्ट चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर एंड फर्स्ट इलेक्शन कमिश्नर ऑफ फर्स्ट इलेक्शन कमिश्नर वॉज सुकुमार सेन ओके द फर्स्ट इलेक्शन कमिश्नर वॉज सुकुमार सेन यू शुड रिमेंबर फॉर योर अपकमिंग एग्जामिनेशन now let's move to the next question from here next question from here uh, is uh, this is the same prediction questions from the uh, for the gdps india's economy is to grow by what percent in 2022 according to the unctad we have already discussed okay sukumar sen is the correct answer or you can say the first CE, uh, first election commissioner of india okay now here comes the next question for you uh, what is the prediction of unctad what is the prediction of unctad <clears throat> of the economic growth of the india 4% 5.4% 5.7% and d 8% what is the correct answer for this question what is the correct answer for this question so here the correct answer for this question as i already told in the previous uh, question the correct answer here is 5.7% okay here the correct answer is 5.7% <clears throat> no sohani we have earlier, earlier discussed as I have made clear that the prediction of IMF is six point eight percent, okay, and the prediction of World Bank is six point five percent, and I have also told you that the prediction of RBI is seven point zero zero percent, and the prediction of Union Budget and the prediction of Union Budget is nine point two percent, okay. so these all are the things or you can say the all are the predictions which are made by the <coughs> various agencies <coughs> which are asked in the examinations okay now let's move to the other question hmm uh, who took charge as the new director general of new director general or dg of itbp and itbp stands for indo tibetan border police indo tibetan border police indo tibetan border police who is the director general avinash singh avinash singh ha uh, monica talapur reddy option number b okay and any other <coughs> okay sohani is giving the answer anish Kum anish dayal singh monica talapur reddy is giving the answer b okay the correct answer for this question is director general of itbp is uh, anish dayal singh now let's move to the other question which nations uh, which nations young king tang will earn the sastra ramanuj prize in 2022 okay so this is the prize which is given to the young uh, young <coughs> mathematicians under 40 year okay young mathematician prize okay young mathematician prize young mathematician prize under <coughs> 40 years of age 
under 40 years of age given by the Sastra University. Okay, so <clears throat> from where Yim King Tang is here options is China, Japan, USA. What will be the correct answer for this question? What will be the correct answer for this question? No, no, no. Uh, USA. Uh, <clears throat> whenever the term Yong Ching Tang Tang these Jing Jang comes in your mind, then the correct answer is China. Okay, the correct answer is, is China. Okay, Ching Ching Tang uh, Ching Tang King Xiang. All these are famous or popular in China. Okay, now let's move to the next question. <coughs> Here, question number nine, uh, 49. International Teachers Day is being celebrated on which date? International Teachers Day is celebrated in which state? Hmm. Sorry, which date? October 5, October 6, October 3 and October 3. So, as you already know that <coughs> National Teachers Day is celebrated on September 5. As you already know that National Teachers Day is celebrated on September 5. Okay. So, after one month, after one month, International Teachers Day is celebrated. Okay. International Teachers Day is celebrated all over the world. And options here are October 5, October 6, <coughs> October 2. What will be the correct answer for this question? Option number A. Yes, option number A is the correct answer. October 5 is celebrated at International Teachers Day everywhere in the world. Now, let's move to the question number 50. <clears throat> First National Dolphin Day celebrated on which date? Okay, so India's, India celebrated this time the first National uh, Dolphin Day. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, the correct answer for this question is, kindly give me the correct answer. Here options are October 4, <clears throat> October 9, October 8, October 5. So, what is the correct answer for this question? What is the correct answer for this question? Kindly give me the answer. Kindly give me the answer for this question. <clears throat> What will be the answer? Okay, Monica Talapur Eddy is saying that the correct answer is option number D. Yes, correct answer is option number D. On October 5, on October 5, October 5, 2009, October 5, 2009, Dolphin was declared as Dolphin was Declared as National Aquatic Animal. National Aquatic <coughs> Animal. Okay. So, you should remember that in 2009, it was, uh, dolphin was declared as National Aquatic Animal. And to commemorate this uh, event, <coughs> uh, every year we will celebrate now, from, every, uh, from now, uh, every year we will going to be celebrate uh, October 5 as the National Dolphin Day. Okay. So, we have discussed 50 questions in this special session of the October revision, October revision and the remaining questions we will uh, discuss in the upcoming sessions. Uh, I am not feeling well. So, I am uh, ending this session. I hope you have enjoyed the session or you have uh, gained a lot of knowledge from this session and if there is any mistake done by me, I am free uh, <coughs> to accept the uh, <coughs> comments from you. So, hmm, is there any question from you? So, Nina Gupta was uh, awarded earlier in 2021. Okay, Nina Gupta was awarded in 2021. Okay, <clears throat> thank you to all of you joining the session and I wish you all a very healthy life. Hmm. If you are going to uh, appear for the SSC GD examination, then you can enroll in the SSC GD Vardhi, uh, <coughs> GD Vardhi course which is uh, launched by the example team and uh, hmm, thank you all of you for joining the session. Okay, Jai Hind, Bande Matram and we will meet uh, in the uh, in night 
for the economic questions at I think uh, 9 p.m. Okay. Hmm. Thank you to all of you.